Welcome to GrishaCast, episode 37. In this episode, we are covering chapters 5 and 6 from the book Crooked Kingdom. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Well, moi sabayenyi casters. Hello. It wouldn't be Grisha cast if I wasn't already stumbling through my words. <laughs> so. Well, you know, when you got a lot going on, sometimes it's hard to remember. I know. So let's um thank some listener cities. The first one we have is Tarascon, France. Whoa. And then Noblesville, Indiana. Hello. Hi. And Clovis, New Mexico. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> I know. That's not how that works. That's it's not how not. any of this works. <laughs> I know, but I've been doing Duolingo, so I've been like randomly throwing in French words anywhere I can. <laughs> I love Duolingo. It's like awesome. Have you ever used it? Yes, but I get bored with one language, and so then I try another language, and then it all just jumbles in my head. There are so many of them. There's Gaelic. Yeah, and they've added <laughs> Latin, uh-huh. finally. And then they also have the um, Dothraki from... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Randomly in there. And then something from either Star Trek or Star Wars. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways, so. But, um, yeah, so we're here. How was your week? It was good. It was very busy. Yes, I feel ya. Yes, very busy. Um, Yeah, I think the stress is starting to to wear me down a little bit. Um, But uh, but everything's good. Got what we need. Everybody's well. (laughs) And that's. All we can hope for right now. Yeah, it's been really, really, really humid and hot here. So that's been adding to my stress. Yes. I have been like this week, I've come home three days and taken a nap. And I never do that. And like, I just have been like exhausted. And also we have to, um, I'm glad we do this, but we finally, they made it mandatory for us to wear face coverings in our building and since I'm at the window, I have to wear it whenever anybody is at my window. And um, and going in and out of the building, which is totally cool. I'm I'm okay with it. It just it gets hot sometimes because yeah. I actually have, like, a real mask. I don't have one of the ones that, like, I don't know, some of the fake turtleneck ones <laughs> that people are like, this is fashionable. And I'm like, it looks like you just pretty much have your shirt over your nose. But. Yes. Those are, it's, it is difficult in the heat. Yes, it is to be covering up. Yes, cover up more. And it just doesn't seem like things are getting better. So I hope all of you guys are safe out there. I know that the world is really just, some places are really bad right now. Yes. Yeah, so. It's very bad here in the U.S. Yeah, and it's bad in so many other countries. I um, was watching something from Australia, and apparently Australia didn't get hit all that hard, luckily. Yeah. Very happy for them for that. They're smart. They're far away. (laughs) They're not near. They're not near any of us. I don't think that's how that works. (laughs) Well, I always thought about how like because I remember think like hearing that Australia didn't get hit very hard either. I or at least I wasn't hearing them in the news, and I was like in my head, I was like, oh well, they're just really far away from everybody. (laughs) They handled it appropriately. (laughs) Well, that. That would help. <laughs> yes, that does help when you handle things appropriately. Israel, I guess, like, <laughs> did handle it appropriately, and now it got, like, really bad. So it seems like everybody's going backwards. Yes. But, hey, we're going to make it through it. We also have to be smart. Just do your part. Be smart. Do your part. Look Where at you. you. Rhy- I know. I'm <laughs> rhyming. So we've got an exciting podcast, so let's just um get on into it. Get on into it. Yeah. We're starting part two. We are. A A killing wing. A killing wind. Mm -hmm. Sounds nice. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So you go, girl. Chapter five. Mm -hmm. We are with Jesper. If you remember, he got the news that his daddy was waiting on him. Papa. (laughs) Come on, Papa. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Wylan goes with him to go meet his dad. They are going to the university district, so we get a new little area. Uh, Jesper says that it smells better there. <laughs> mm. um, and that his father always liked it, too. And that actually starts a discussion about Vanek with a little history of both him and the barrel. 
So that actually starts our first scene Ooh. right off the bat. Wow. Right on into it. Right on into it. Okay. Well, here we so go. Y'all. I'm playing Jesper. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded so dirty. And Eric is playing Wylan. Here we go. So, curtain up. The barrel eats people. Maybe, Wylan considered. But business is business. The gambling parlors and brothels meet a demand. They offer employment. They pay taxes. What a good little barrel boy you've become. That's practically a page out of the boss's books. Every few years, some reformer got it into his head to clean up the barrel and purge Ketterdam of its unsavory reputation. That was when the pamphlets came out, a war of propaganda between the owners of the gambling dens and pleasure houses on one side and the black-suited merch reformers on the other. In the end, it all came down to money. The businesses of the East and West Dave turned a serious profit, and the Dinsians of the Barrel dumped very righteous coin into the city's tax coffers. Wyland tugged on the satchel strap again. It had gotten twisted at the top. I don't think it's much different from wagering your fortune on a shipment of silk or jurta. Your odds are just a lot better when you're playing the market. You have my attention, Merchling. Better odds were always of interest. What's the most your father's ever lost on a trade? I don't really know. He stopped talking about those things with me a long time ago. Jesper hesitated. Jan Van Eck was three kinds of fool for the way he'd treated his son, but Jesper could admit he was curious about Wyland's supposed affliction. He wanted to know what Wyland saw when he tried to read, why he seemed fine with equations or prices on a menu, but not sentences or signs. Instead, he said... I wonder if proximity to the barrel makes merchers more uptight. All that black clothing and restraint. Meat only twice a week, lager instead of brandy. Maybe they're making up for all the fun we're having. Keeping the scales balanced? Sure. I mean, just think of the heights of debauchery we could reach if no one kept the city in check. Champagne for breakfast. Naked orgies on the floor of the exchange. Wyland made a flustered noise that sounded like (laughs) a bird with a cough and looked anywhere but at Jesper. He was so wonderfully easy to rattle, though Jesper could admit he didn't think the university district needed a dose of the dirty. He liked it just as fine as it was, clean and quiet and smelling of books and flowers. End scene. We so I liked that yes. for like several reasons. We get a little bit of background as to like how the barrel is constant and Ketterdam is constantly in this like back and forth between the merchers and the debauchery. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and how it kind of keeps itself in check with this cycle. Um, and then also uh, brings up a good point as to like what does Wyland see when he tries to read because he can see other things. So the whole yeah. reading thing. So yeah, it was just a... It was a little interesting tidbit there. Yeah, I liked it too because I really liked the part, uh, uh, the exact same part where he, because he's, Wyland's really good at math and equations and mm-hmm. you can read that stuff. And I'm the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the exact, <laughs> exact same. Like, not good at math here. No. So as they get closer to meeting his dad, Jesper thinks about his time in uni and his love for the gargoyles. And that's not really important. Honestly, but it was just a little fun fact as he was describing the gargoyles <laughs> and all the things that they did. There was like a gargoyle like chewing on a pencil. It was just a fun little little visual there. He sees his dad across the way and he says he's, quote, dressed as a farmer on his way to church. Aww. So looking a little out of place and he's actually a little scared that he's going to stand out too much. And instead of his dad being angry like Jesper thought he would, he grinned and hugged Jesper. Oh, tender moment. Da da. <laughs> The funny moment is that he Jesper introduces Wyland to his dad, and his dad yells, "Do you speak Kurt?" <laughs> because he still looks shoe. Yeah. So in his mind, he's foreign. So at that just made me giggle. Yes. They invite his dad to lunch, <laughs> <laughs> and just as Jesper is about to tell him why he left uni, there's gunfire. Of course. I mean. It just wouldn't be it wouldn't this be. series exactly. <laughs> if everything went all right. Understandably, his father is like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> Poor farmer. <laughs> Poor church farmer. And Jesper and Wyland discuss options to return fire. Wyland's got bombs, y'all, and a plan <laughs> to go through the reading room. 
Boom. Jesper was impressed at this. Yeah. He was like, it just takes a few times of you getting shot at, and you magically come up with plans. It's awesome. So on three, Wylan and Calm, who is Jesper's dad, C-O-L-M, run to the reading room while Jesper covers them with guns that are not his own, I think, or not his like typical pearly yeah, nice because, ones. Yeah, they're not. they're still locked away. Hmm. Wylan suddenly screams for Jesper to get in the water, and the world just explodes. <laughs> and when Jesper looks up afterwards, there's like holes everywhere with like <laughs> smoke coming out. <laughs> it was Wylan's bomb, and the sniper on the roof is like screaming in agony. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what kind of bomb is this? <laughs> oh, Wylan. Oh, yes. Uh, Jesper meets up with his dad and Wylan in the library. That's a reading room, right? A library? Is that yeah. what we're getting here? <laughs> I would hope. So. I would think so. <laughs> they kept saying the reading room. I was like, that's a library. Yeah. Um, where everyone is freaked out. But there's a pretty little blonde girl that recognizes oh. Jesper. Apparently, they were supposed to go out. She said, you were supposed to take me to breakfast. What? And she, of course she remembered. Mm-hmm. And right now is the perfect time it to is. discuss that, too. <laughs> the world just exploded and there's smoke and there's some guy on the roof screaming, dying. <laughs> but hey, you were supposed to take me to breakfast. <laughs> Where are my waffles? Oh, uh, yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> just real. I didn't so, mean it like that either. So apparently, um, so anyway, he promises to buy her waffles if he lives. Perfect. And Wyland grumbles about, you're not able to afford waffles. Obviously, he's jealous. So, right. You know, he has to yeah. be like, I'm still here, guys. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Love Wyland. <laughs> so cute. Um, there's a, a squalor in the rare books room upstairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Who, like, freaks out about Wyland because he looks you and he's like, you're never going to take me alive. Um, so... Squallers are in the rare books room to keep the air dry, to preserve the rare books. Side what note. a boring job. I know, but Jesper actually says that it's a, a fun, cushy job that like he would love to take that. Because well, yeah, you'd be easy. doing nothing. Mm-hmm. You could literally just sit around and just be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, anybody listening to that has no idea, but I was waving my hand around. If you go to us on YouTube at Grecian Girls, then you can see me waving my little hand and doing Ooh, all my weird little faces. You. I know. I see what you did there. <laughs> did you? Mm. <laughs> uh, so, Wylan, in his grand plan, goes up to a map. And presses a button marking Oz Alta, which is the capital. Boop. And a gap appears in the wall. And they said it's like small, like you could barely fit into it. Uh, Wyland says that it leads to the printmaker shop. They climb in and the map slides close behind them. Jesper says he needs to stop underestimating Wyland. And Wyland replies that he'll be harder to surprise. Cute. Mm-hmm. And I'm closing out the chapter with the quote at the end, as Eric so often likes to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jesper grinned, but it didn't quite feel right. From behind him, he could hear shouting from the rare books room. It had been a close call. He was bleeding from his shoulder. They'd made a grand escape. These were the moments he lived for. He should be buzzing from the excitement of the fight. The thrill was still there, fizzing through his blood. But beside it was a cold, unfamiliar sensation that felt like it was draining the joy from him. All he could think was, Da could have been hurt. He could have died. Jesper was used to people shooting at him. He would have been a little insulted if they'd stopped shooting at him. This was different. His father hadn't chosen this fight. His only crime had been putting his faith in his son. That's the problem with Ketterdam, Jesper thought as they stumbled uncertainly through the dark. Trusting the wrong person can get you killed. Oh. End of chapter. So, yeah, I figure... That's a lot there. Because in earlier in the chapter, he had talked about the excitement of being in the fight. Like he tells his right. dad, like, I'm good at this stuff. And then at the end, he realizes that he put someone he loves in danger. Yeah. That didn't choose it. Like, Wylan chose it. Mm-hmm. But his dad doesn't even know about it. Yeah, exactly. It's a new situation for him. And he's putting his trust in Jesper. Yeah. Jesper seems, it seems like... It seems like our crows all like enjoy 
obviously doing what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, they're just they're good at it as well, so they probably get like that little kind of like boost or high that from rush. it. rush. Yeah, the rush. Mm-hmm. And like he's not used to all of a sudden having like I mean, a family member there that's thrown into it and thinking about somebody else in the middle of yeah. that. I mean, that's a whole new world. So, so we get a little bit of um a little bit of love from Jesper. Yeah, some empathy. Yeah. So that's nice. It's nice. Cuz we haven't seen a lot of that from Jesper. No, not yet. He's just been very I guess kind of flippant. Yeah, and I don't think it's that he doesn't have it. It's just he hasn't shown. We haven't read that side right. of him yet. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna move right on into chapter six, which is a whole different perspective. Now yes. we are gonna be with Nina. So uh, we have to. We're kind of like going. But Nina is thinking about when she was detoxing from Parm. So she's just kind of in this really bad place. Nina um, hadn't been on the island when Inej had been taken hostage. And remember, her and Wylan had been stowed um, over um, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So she, um, where was that? I can't remember right now. It was an island. Somewhere. Stowed away. How about that? We'll just go with that. We can't remember. That's okay. Um, I've slept since then. We have. Um, she's remembering how horrible it was for her, how cruel she was to Matthias while she was pretty much going through the withdrawals and just pretty much like begging him for one more hit. And you can imagine, I mean, Matthias actually is caring for her now. So, I mean, that's, I mean, if you really care for her, then, I mean, he's not going to give it to her. So. It's uh-huh. got to be hard. So we've got a quote here. After Kaz had settled them on Black Veil, Nina had managed to last two days before she'd broken down and gone to Kuwe to ask him for another dose of Param, a small one, just a taste of it, something to ease this relentless need. The sweats were gone, the bouts of fever, end quote. So we've got her kind of all of a sudden like being tempted. It's not really temp- tempting. It's just she's in- she's still in the like midst of like... Her withdrawal, that takes mm-hmm. weeks to, like, kind of, like, let your body readjust. Kuwe does tell her that he, he gave all that he had to Matthias. And her first um, instinct is to go and vomit at that because she realizes <laughs> that the drug she wants is in between, is is behind Matthias. Yeah. And she's not going to be able to get that. No. That's not going to be easy. She reminds herself how well she has been doing, though, that she's doing good and, you know, she's making it through. Um, this chapter is written really well because it really is written, like, I think it just, the way it describes, like, I think her addictive mind going back and forth is just done really well. It's realistic. It is. (laughs) So I've got another quote here, and this is a memory. Then last night, when she'd been preparing to cozy up to Cornelius Meat, she'd made the mistake of using her power. Even with the wig and the flowers and the costume and the corset, she she hadn't quite felt up to the role of seductress. So she'd found a looking glass inside Club Cumulus and attempted to tailor the circles beneath her eyes. It was the first time she'd tried to use her power since her recovery. She'd broken into a sweat from the effort, and as soon as the bruised color faded, the hunger for Parm hit, a swift, hard kick to her chest. She'd bent double, clutching the sink, her mind filled with breakneck thoughts of how she could get away, who might have a supply, what she could trade, end quote. So that's kind of like, I guess things were going well for her, and then she tried to use her power just to help tailor a little bit, and that kind of brought that sensation back. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's weird. I mean, because we don't, I mean, there's nothing like that in our world where, like, you try to use your power and, like, your addiction, like, starts to hit harder. Um, so she made it through the job, as we know, um, and when everything had been secured that evening and everybody had fallen asleep after that job with Cornelius Smeet, she decides to go through Matthias's things <laughs> and just rummage through it, trying to find some Parm, but there's no luck. So then she curls up to Matthias and tries to pretend she is wanting some. She's rubbing up and down his body, mm-hmm. grabbing through every pocket, trying to find it. Um, and he grabs her arm, stops her, and tells her, he doesn't have it. (laughs) Stop. I don't have it. And she asks who, and he tells her that Kaz does. Yeah. And here we go with another quote. She rested her forehead against Matthias's chest. I hate this, she said. I hate you a little, Druskella. I'm used to it. Come here. He'd wrapped his arms around her and gotten her talking about Ravka, about Inej, 
He distracted her with stories, named the winds that blew across Fyrda, told her of his first meal in the Druskela Hall. End quote. I just thought that was sweet. It's it's neat to see their relationship growing mm-hmm. because I don't think it really started growing until Crooked Kingdom. Like I don't think, I mean, definitely towards the end of Six of Crows, but yeah. there wasn't a lot of like really like seeing them like kind of like coming together. There was more action that happened at the end that we really didn't get to see it. it right, and she's way more vulnerable now. Yeah, it's just sweet. So um. I'm going to read a lot of those little romantic quotes. Okay. So she's finally fallen asleep because all of a sudden the next thing she remembers is the tomb door slamming open and Kaz, Matthias, Jesper, Wylan, and a farmer bursting through. (laughs) Good morning, sunshine. (laughs) So, um. Come on, church father. That is calm. Is that how you pronounce it? Calm, yeah. Calm. Okay. So she's happy now because, um. It gives her something else to think about besides mm-hmm. her parm. She's now just got like all the guys in there. <laughs> There's a burst. distraction. It's a big distraction. Mm-hmm. She reminds herself that um, she also has got to get ready for tonight's mission, and she's gonna have to be a corporal Nick. Kaz questions everyone to make sure no one followed them, and um, they all pretty much kind of checked out that they don't think anybody followed them. They try to figure out what had just happened, which is the chapter before that Terry had read, and Cass says that Calm, Jesper's father, was the bait. Calm tells them how the bank had called in their loan and needed payment immediately, so he came to Ketterdam to find Jesper and finds out through the university that Jesper wasn't enrolled, so his father obviously gets worried and doesn't know what has happened, so he goes to the authorities Mm -hmm. um, to try to, like, see what's going on and i mean he didn't know and that happens to be the stod watch right so <laughs> whoops yeah oopsie then jesper's friends try to kind of start to help him out because jesper and his father are kind of getting into it i mean it's just like and his friends I, l- I really love this moment so they all help him out with this making up this small lie to his father about what really happened um it involves gunsmiths great big investments gone wrong and how it goes to if it goes to the authorities that they're all that they're all working for the wrong people and pretty much you could die and this <laughs> long elaborate story but they all help him out and i think it's kind of cute um so kaz tells calm they're going to get him his money back and that they're not going to lose their farm and this is a conversation with calm and kaz But you're going to step outside the law to do it, Colm said. He shook his head wearily. You barely look old enough to graduate. Ketterdam was my education. And I can tell you this, Jesper never would have turned to me for help if he'd had anywhere else to go. You can't be so bad, boy, said Colm gruffly. You haven't been alive long enough to rack up your share of of sin. I'm a quick study. Can I trust you? No. Colm took up his crumpled hat again. Can I trust you to help Jesper through this? Yes. Calm sighed. He looked around at all of them. Nina found herself standing up straighter. You lot make me feel very old. End quote. I just like that because there's a lot of really good information. Like, I just love Kaz. And you're just like, you can't trust me. No. And also, I am a quick study (laughs) at sin. It also reminds us that they're teenagers. Yep. They are very young. They like, are. I forget that yeah. as we're reading through. So it's good to have those reminders every once in a while that they're teenagers. They are. I mean, none of them have reached 20. No. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and it's crazy because, I, yeah, you totally forget that. Kaz tells Calm they are going to move him to a different hotel that's probably a little bit safer for him and that they will have him in the money within three days. Com wants to try and figure out a less dangerous way to get the money, but Jesper begs his da to trust him and mentions briefly that if they lose their farm, that they're going to be leaving her behind mm-hmm. and she is there. Yes. But we're not really knowing. Ex- they don't go into specifics about that, but I'm guessing his mom yeah, that's, probably is buried yeah. there. Um, Calm leaves with Specht and Roddy to go get checked into his new hotel. Ooh, mm-hmm. Moving up. Moving on up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so and tells them all to be safe. And if they don't have the money in three days, Jesper and him are leaving without it. 
So they then start to have, when Combs gone, they all kind of have this little discussion to figure out what happened. And here's the quote. Do we know who set up the ambush at the university, Wylan asked? Jesper's father went to the Stodwatch, said Matthias. I'm sure many of the officers are sus... sus <laughs> Susceptible? Thank you. To bribes. True, said Nina. But it can't be coincidence that the bank called in their loan when they did. Wyland sat down at the table. If the banks are involved, my father may be behind it. Pekka Rollins has influence at the banks too, Kaz said, and Nina saw his gloved hand flex over the crow's head of his cane. Could they be working together, she asked. Jasper rubbed his hand over his face. All the saints and your aunt... Eva, let's hope not. I'm not ruling anything out, said Kaz, but none of this changes what has to happen tonight. End quote. So thanks for bearing with me on that one. Just had like, whew, <laughs> little. <laughs> Come on, vocabulary. I know. I've had a lot. Um, well, whatever. I have this all the time. So if you listen to this podcast then you're always hearing me mispronounce things and get kind of flustered. But Sometimes those big words just pop up out of nowhere. They do. <laughs> and the reason I read that is just because there is a lot of information yes. in there. And um, we we do kind of get reminded about Pekka Rollins might have some influence. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's just, yeah. So, but also they've got something going on tonight. So it's kind of like part two to the mission. Kaz then unexpectedly hands Jesper his pistols. He says it wasn't hard for him to steal them back. Jesper's really happy, obviously, because those are his babies. Then night falls, and it's time for part two of their mission. They all load up on a small little boat. Everyone has their own weapons. Nina actually has a pistol this time because she can't rely on her own powers. She goes down a rabbit hole of thinking back on what if she had been dosed with Parem while Inej had been taken, but then quickly jumps back into reality, realizing that she would eat dead if she had mm-hmm. taken more Parem. Wyland says that they better be right about all this because his father will be ready, and Kaz says he is expecting that. And that leads us to our scene, and actually to the end of our chapter. Ooh, so uh... we'll be playing it out so i will be playing jesper and terry will be playing nina and um also please enjoy summoner's way in the background played by um made by ollie dodd or composed by ollie dodd so curtain up No one spoke as they reached shore and disembarked as quickly and quietly as possible. Kaz gestured for them to get to their positions. He would approach from the north, Matthias and Wyland from the east. Nina and Jasper would be responsible for the guards on the western edge of the perimeter. Nina flexed her fingers. Silence, four guards. That should be easy. A few weeks ago it would have been. Slow their pulses. Send them quietly into unconsciousness without ever letting an alarm sound. But now she wondered if it was the damp or her own nervous perspiration that made her clothes cling so uncomfortably to her skin. Too soon, she saw the shapes of the first two guards at their post. They leaned against the low stone wall, rifles propped beside them, their conversation rising and falling in a lazy hum. Easy. Take them shut eyes, said Jesper. Nina focused on the guards, letting her own body become attuned to theirs, seeking out their heartbeats, the rushing rhythm of the blood. It was like stumbling blind through the dark. There was simply nothing there. Dimly, she was aware of the suggestion of their frames, a trace of their knowing, but that was all. She saw them with her eyes, heard them with her ears, but the rest was silence. That other sense inside her, the gift that had been there for as long as she could remember, the heart of the power that had been her constant companion since she was a child, had simply ceased to beat. All she could think of was Perem, the exhilaration, the ease, as if the universe lay at her fingertips. What are you waiting for, said Jesper, alerted by some some sound or simply their presence. One of the guards glanced in their direction, peering into the shadows. He lifted his rifle and signaled to his companion to follow. They're headed this way, Jesper's hand went to his guns. Oh, saints, if Jesper had to shoot, the other guards would be alerted. The alarm would be raised and this whole endeavor might go straight to hell. Nina focused with all her will, 
The hunger for Param seized her, quaking through her body, digging into her skull with determined talons. She ignored it. One of the guards faltered, went to his knees. Gillis, said the other guard. What is it? But he was n- not foolish enough to lower his weapon. Halt! He shouted in their direction, still trying to support his friend. Identify yourself! Nina, Jesper whispered furiously, do something! Nina clenched her fist, trying to squeeze the guard's larynx shut to prevent him from calling for help. Identify yourself! Jesper drew his gun. No, 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 she was not going to be the reason this went wrong. Param was supposed to kill her or leave her alone, not stick her in this miserable, powerless purgatory. Rage swept through Nina, clean, perfect, focusing anger. Her mind reached out, and suddenly, she had hold of something, not a body, but something. She caught a movement from the corner of her eye, a dim shape emerging from the shadows, a cloud of dust. It was it shot toward the standing guard. He swatted at it as if trying to drive away a swarm of mosquitoes, but it whirled faster, faster, and... A nearly invisible blur. The guard opened his mouth to scream and the cloud vanished. He let out a grunt and toppled backward. His compatriot was still balancing woozily on his knees. Nina and Jesper strode forward and Jesper gave the kneeling guard a whack to the back of the head with the butt of his revolver. The man slumped to the ground, unconscious. Cautiously, they examined the other guard. He lay with his eyes open, staring up at the starry sky. His mouth and nostrils were choked with fine white dust. Did you do that? said Jesper. Had she? Nina felt like she could taste the dust in her own mouth. This shouldn't be possible. A corporalnik could manipulate the human body, not inorganic matter. This was the work of a fabricator, a powerful one. It wasn't you? I appreciate the vote of confidence, but this was all you, gorgeous. I didn't mean to kill him. What had she meant to do? Just keep him quiet. Dust dribbled from the corner of his parted lips in a fine line. There are two more guards, said Jesper, and we're already running late. How about we just knock them over the head? Sophisticated, I like it. Nina felt a strange crawling sensation all over her body, but the need for Perim wasn't screaming through her any longer. I didn't mean to kill him. It didn't matter. It couldn't right now. The guards were down and the plan was in motion. Come on, she said. Let's go get our girl. End scene. So what happened there? Yeah, a lot. There's a lot that went on. And I know, but I'm not going to tell you anything about it. (laughs) Um, But yeah. So something weird happened, and Eric knows, and I don't. I know, something's going on with (laughs) Nina. Yep, but she took Param. Param. She did. She did, like, I mean, and they did a really good job, I think, sorry, they, Lee, did a mm-hmm. wonderful job of describing, like, I love it when she was reaching out to, like, hurt the guards and, like, just the way it was described. Right, like, yeah. she couldn't feel them. She was, like, reaching out. She could hear them. But, like, and, like it was just done so well. I love that. Love it. So, um, anyways. Um, so that's all our reading section for tonight, folks. So that means it's that time for... Grisha Cast News! Toot toot! <laughs> <laughs> so we have Grisha Cast News, which is literally Grisha Cast News. Yes. The biggest Grisha Cast News we've ever had. But we've kind of already told you anyways. <laughs> um, so we will be interviewing Lee Bardugo, and it will be happening in August. So you all can just know that. And if you have, we don't have a date that we're going to release it, um, but we just let you know it will happen in August, and it will be released in August. We just don't know what day yet. So get those questions in if you have any burning desires mm-hmm. that you have for Miss Bardugo. Um, and send it, please, to info at grishacast.com and let us know. We would love to be able to help ask your question. We're going to be able to have quite a bit of time with Miss Bardugo, and it's very exciting. It is exciting. So um, It's here. Yeah, we're going to be able to ask questions about the upcoming new books, mm-hmm. um, if there's any, like, what she can tell us. I don't know whether... By that time, anything will be released about the show yet. Maybe there will be. Maybe we'll have more to be able to talk to her about that. Or maybe you have questions about something you're confused about in the Grishaverse that we could clear up. Yeah. 
Or, I mean... So many options. There are always those fun just, like, just get to know her questions, too, oh, yeah. that I'm kind of excited to ask. <laughs> so, um, anyways, that leads us into our... We said um, that we were going to take our quiz. Yes. And we asked all of you guys um, what you all wanted, who you guys wanted to be, first mm-hmm. off. And then um, we were also going to say the same. So mm-hmm. we're going to take the quiz. And we're going to do it now. So do we think we should say ahead of time? Oh, yeah. Think? Okay. So who do you think? Who do you want? And I. Well, I mean, everybody, I'm pretty sure knows that <laughs> I would want it to be Nina. Right. Obviously. I mean, I don't identify with her like completely, but as the majority of the characters or whatever, like that, she's the one that I, I identify, I guess, with the most. But in my heart of hearts about who I know. <laughs> That I know that I am. Anyway. I'm pretty sure that um, I'm more like Kaz, okay. realistically. Just because if you've listened for long enough and I talk about <laughs> don't touch me and I don't right. like people. And yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of Kaz in here. Yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think I'm going to surprise a lot of you guys, but I identify with Wyland a lot. Okay. And it's just there's a lot of parts about him that, like, I don't know. I just I identify with some of his shyness. I identify with there's some things that, like, he gets really well and, like, he's can surprise people. Mm-hmm. And he's, um, I don't know, he's kind of like this cute little sophisticated boy, but he's smart and he loves and, like, I don't know. There's just parts of him that I really identify really well with. So I know everybody, but... That's who I f- that's who I feel like if I take the test I'm gonna get. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course I really would love to be able to be Jasper. Right. So yeah. I just I don't that. but I don't think I like I'm I'm I don't even know how to hold a gun. <laughs> so like I mean, there we go. So it's yeah, it's hard. It's who I who I yes. feel deep in, in my soul I really think I'm gonna get and then who I'd love to who be. Who you able wanna to- be as a person. Right. Because I would actually love to be uh, Corporal Nick. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, okay. So reality. we're going to start this quiz. Okay. So is your first question, choose your weapons? Yep. Choose your weapons. Okay. So I'm going to pick, do we want to say who? We're, yeah, we should might as well sure, say, say yeah. your answer. Okay. So I'm going to say there's nothing sharper than my wits. Yep. That's mine too. That's yours too. It is. Okay. So, um, and it, I think we should also say that a lot of you guys also said you were going to get Kaz, which mm-hmm. we'll go over that. So, someone has a secret. How do you get it out of him? Um, okay. So, eavesdrop, let him keep it. Everyone has a secret. Get in his head without him knowing it. Threaten, make a friendly wager. Flirt. Flirt. <laughs> get in his head without him knowing it. Okay. I'm good at that. Read the, you read the <laughs> next one, girl. You are most likely to worry about A, betraying your honor, B, disappointing your parents, C, being under someone's thumb, D, showing weakness, E, giving into temptation, and F, losing your way. So that's what's different about these quizzes is it's just the answers are flipped around. Mm. That's what I just realized. We get the same questions, same. Yeah. So, um... I have two that I am going back and forth with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I'm gonna say showing weakness. Yeah, I understand that. Um, I think mine's gonna be giving in to temptation. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Okay. So, what do you prize most? Independence, truth, learning, family, power. Cash money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I totally independence. I could, yeah. That's because I do what I want. <laughs> I really do. I like learning. Oh, yes, you yeah. uh-huh. do. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. At your best, you are mm. funny, charming, loyal, brave, cunning, intuitive. Okay, so at my best, I think I'm charming, but I really want to be cunning. <laughs> I'm intuitive. Because I am a Slytherin. <laughs> so, but I also am funny, I think. People say I'm funny. Oh, shit. Charming or funny? I'm going to go with just charming. That'll be nice. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, 
What's the next question? Your favorite action hero. This is weird. Is okay. Batman, Bucky Barnes. No idea. I don't know. Han Solo, Katniss Everdeen, the Hulk, or Imperate. Im- I don't know. Furiosa. I don't know who that person is. Furiter. Yeah. Um. So I don't like <laughs> this question because there's only one girl answer. So I'm sorry, but I mean, like, I'm just all about like females. Like, what about Catwoman? Like, um, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Well, any other anyway. female heroine? But anyway, I choose Batman because he's dark. <laughs> okay. Well, I go with Katniss because she's female. So well, there you go. Um, if you could wake up tomorrow with an amazing talent, you would be able to learn any language and speak it like a native. Brawl like a UFC champ, <laughs> leap and tumble like a Cirque du Soleil performer, shoot with perfect aim, pick any lock, play a musical instrument like a virtuoso. Yeah, this one was hard for me. This yeah. is this was hard. Um, I'm gonna choose learn any language. See, that's how I feel. Um, that's exactly what I kind of going towards. Um, because I really don't have any need to do the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm. I'm stress for It's the same for me. Okay. Um, in high stress situations, you come up with a new plan, freak out, remain calm, shake it off, and refocus. Thrive, eat. What I think better on a full stomach. <laughs> Some of these are so obvious, like who they're going I know. for. And this is another one that I have two that my brain. Same thinks. here. I'm in between freak out and eat. <laughs> Because I do, I would do both at the same time. I'd be uh, <laughs> freaking out and shoving like cake down my throat. I'm going to say come up with a new plan. Okay. Mine was between that and remain calm. <laughs> okay. Yes, we're opposites in that. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm not, not going to ple- completely freak out. I'm just going to eat. <laughs> I love to eat. I do. Yes, you I do. I really do. You do. Okay. So you are attracted to. The strong one, the confident one, the good one, the funny one, the shy one, the mysterious one. <laughs> Ooh, I know where I go. I know where <laughs> I go, too. I say the good one. I say the strong one. I'm attracted to people that are better people than I am. <laughs> hey, that is the absolute truth. I <laughs> am <laughs> married to a man that is way better, way, way, way better than I am. <sighs> I could... Oh my God, him and I are in two totally opposite. We're not even on different pages. We're in different books. We're in different walls. We're not yeah. even in the same library. But that's why it works. I know. So, um, on your birthday, you'd cheesecake. like to receive, well, <laughs> cake, also more cake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is so true. If you've ever been to <laughs> one of Eric's parties, it's all about the cake and how much he eats the night oh, that he gets it. Yes. Hint all of it. Be I do. <laughs> vengeance on my enemies. <laughs> I don't care as long as it comes from the heart. Birthdays are frivolous. Keep your trinkets. A trip to Vegas or the perfect mixtape. A trip to Vegas really is an answer? Yeah. That's so weird. Okay, so I'm, mine's obviously cake. Also more cake. Mine is I don't care as long as it comes from the heart because I'm not a big fan of gifts. I just want someone to be nice. Okay. <laughs> That's sweet. Your odd, ideal vacation is... Vienna or Prague, someplace cosmopolitan, someplace cold and snowy, lying on a beach doing absolutely nothing, a road trip with my family, zip lining, skydiving, swimming with sharks. I don't take vacations. I don't like any of those answers. <laughs> so I'm good with someplace cold and snowy. Yeah, I figured you would be. I'm going to say lying on a beach doing absolutely nothing. I don't like doing absolutely nothing, but out of all those, like the beach is my favorite. So kind of sounds nice. I'm going for beach. Mm. Sounds beautiful. Okay. In a group, you are the glue. You hold it all together. The joker, ready to make everyone laugh. The mouth, you have an opinion on everything. The leader, always making plans. The outsider, you never quite fit in. Or the rock, you can be relied on. I always feel like the outsider. You never quite fit in. Mm. I'm a leader. You are a leader. I'm, I'm a leader. I can't listen to anyone else. <laughs> That's what makes you amazing, though. <laughs> Because you do what you want. I do. (laughs) (laughs) 
So on a Friday night, you are trying a new restaurant, catching up on work, spending time alone at a concert, at a party, or throwing a party at the gym. Okay, so spending time alone sounds like really sad, but like it's also kind of like really nice. Like You know that's what you want to put. <laughs> like so I'm just putting that. Mine's I mean, at a concert because Thank you, 2020. Yeah. I haven't been to one other than in February when I saw Celine Tion. Um, But typically, Ooh. we go all the time. Yes. All the time. Show results. Woo-hoo. I haven't been to a con. Oh, we're showing results already? Oh, my God. <laughs> Called it. What are you? I'm Kaz. Me too. Okay. But, like, our answers no, are- No, yeah. Our answers make were no different. no sense to even be Kaz. I didn't even answer a question that made it seem like I was I could Kaz. see that mine were Kaz, but like we answered very differently mm-hmm. and we got the same result. Okay. So just want to let you guys know, I know it seems like this is rigged, but it's not. Um, I have taken this before and I have gotten Wyland before. Um, that's not why I picked him, but I'm just letting you know, this is not rigged, but it seems like everybody's gotten Kaz. Yeah. So that goes to our listener thank yous real quickly, which thank you so much for, um, responding back. So on Instagram, we've got Emile.yikes. Um, she wanted to be Nina, but got Kaz. We have bookish fan things. She thinks she's more like a Nej, but got Kaz. <laughs> Then our good friend spurts the fur. She got Kaz and thinks that Eric's going to pick Jesper and Terry's going to pick Nina, which is pretty much right. Um, Brianna Mac got, um, expected Jesper or Nina, but got Kaz. And then Books Over Reality thought they'd be Matthias, but they got Kaz. <laughs> and then Wingill48 thinks they are Kaz and Nina and got Kaz. So. Full room of Kaz's. Yeah. And then Facebook, we had Gracie Conboy and Ariana Foreman, and they both got Kaz and wanted to be Kaz. So. All right. Okay. So I know Kaz is very popular, but anyways, I'm kind of disappointed that <laughs> that was my answer. You're not Kaz. I am not Kaz. You're not Kaz. No. Mm-mm. But. I'm just, I'm going through it again really quickly and trying to be very obvious to see what will happen. I hope you get. I hope it changes. I hope so, too. Like, I'm trying to be very, very obvious of who I'm picking. Um, Hopefully. Maybe. But I know There's this some isn't that aren't rigged. Very... I proved it. Yeah, because I... you got a different one. Once. Yeah. One time. Mm-hmm. And I, I have the proof to show it to you guys. I will, like... Yeah, I got the screenshot. I t- I've got a screenshot <laughs> that, sh- that shows Wyland. Mm-hmm. So, and... Yeah, so I wonder if they just make it where they just really want everybody. And see, even when you read the description of Kaz, you're most like Kaz, a criminal prodigy and rising (laughs) star among Ketterdam's gangs. Cunning, quick-witted, and a born leader, you are a planner who leaves nothing to chance, but beware, though you excel at trickery, you're dangerously good at fooling yourself. I did not answer a single question that would make me Kaz. Okay. Did I went through. I got Kaz again. I went through and picked every single Nina one. All the food, all the power, all the um, I'm a weapon ones. So it just must be really hard to get. I. But I took it. the, And I got Jesper. I mean, not Jesper. No, you I, got I got Wyland. Wyland. But I mean, I swear. I. Mm. All right. Well, well, everybody's Kaz. We're, we're all we're a full room of thieves. Everybody is like Kaz. Nobody trusts one another. <laughs> I mean, just be careful. I that, mean, okay. We're all, all right. We're all loyal to one another, but watch your backs. And we're money hungry. And don't touch us. Yeah, don't touch us. <laughs> all right. Well, that was fun. Was it? Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was fun going through the quiz. It was, and it was really cool to see all your answers. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe that'll be a question we'll ask Lee. Like, I wonder if she can. Ca- I doubt she <laughs> I came doubt up- she has anything to do with it. She probably has nothing no. to do with it. But wouldn't it be neat for her to take it? Yeah. Uh, should we waste <laughs> our time with? I, I don't know if that's. No, tell we- her to do it beforehand. Yeah. There you go. We'll see if she can do it beforehand <laughs> and see what she gets. 
cars. <laughs> Everybody's cars. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, so, um, thank you guys for listening. Please don't forget go to Apple Podcasts and rate us. And also next week we will be reading chapters seven through nine. So we'll be reading three chapters. Ooh. Seven and nine are both like short, and eight's um the longest one. So, um, yeah, but still like not that much. Still gonna give us enough time to be able to cover and talk and and shenanigans, shenanigans. <laughs> so, well, it's been fun, y'all. So we will see you all next week. No mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram at GrishaCast, YouTube at GrishaCast, Twitter at Grisha Podcast, and Facebook at GrishaCast. Special thanks to Oliver Dodd for the use of Summoner's Way.